have with me here Professor George Ellis, who has just given a, a research seminar for the Faraday Institute here in Cambridge. And I just thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, ask a couple of questions. Um, if you are able to, could you please uh, summarise the main theme of your seminar today? The theme of the seminar is that in the hierarchy of complexity in which physics underlies chemistry, underlies biology, underlies the body, underlies the mind, underlies society, in that hierarchy, causation takes place from the bottom upwards, which is what reductionism is about, that you can reduce the high level to the low levels, and so the low levels underlies the high levels. But in addition, causation flows from the top down, and what happens at the higher levels has genuine causal powers over that which happens at the lower levels. Now, I know that the theme that you've been talking about is including both elements of philosophy and physics and science. Do you find that philosophers on the one hand or physicists on the other are often reluctant to cross those kinds of boundaries together? Yes, they are. Um, <coughs> the physicists tend to take for granted a reductionist approach, even though many examples within their domain show that this doesn't always work. They very seldom talk to the philosophers about this. Um, the people who are most at home in this kind of thing are the biologists and particularly brain scientists. A lot of the brain science literature nowadays talks about top-down causation. In fact, you can't understand the brain without top-down causation, so it's a common theme in that area. And do you think this is something that's neglected maybe in the general science and religion dialogue where other topics tend to dominate the conversation? Um, I think it is neglected. There's a group of people who've been looking at this. Arthur Peacock was one of the people who talked about this a lot, Nancy Murphy, <coughs> myself, um, a couple of other people. Um, it's not directly the mainstream science and religion. It's what I call the foothills of science and religion, which is the foundations. And I think it's very important in that sense, in that if everything is determined in a bottom-up way, and reductionism is true, it, it, it removes the basis for a lot of what we would like to be true, and I think that it's a false, that is the only way of causation. So I think it's, I do think it's important for the science and religion dialogue, and it should perhaps get more prominence. Professor George Ellis, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.